three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Red with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy and Synergy Collaborative. And I've got Anna Marino on. Are you there, Anna? Yes, Hello. how are you? I am wonderful. You already knew that, right? Yes. <laughs> you always wonderful. <laughs> you gotta be happy. You know, it's, uh, attitude is everything, right? Absolutely, <laughs> life's too short. It's, it's good for your health. Yes. Are you, you're over in North Carolina, right? Yes, I'm located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina, I know where that is. So I told yeah. you, I used to live in Asheville, North Carolina for a couple of years to get my head together. Good place. <laughs> it's a beautiful place there too. Mm -hmm. So you're married and got kids and all that kind of stuff? I'm married, I have a dog as a kid. A fur baby. <laughs> It's a fur baby, yes. I know exactly. how to <laughs> That's what we got. We got a little, uh, it's a mix between a chihuahua and a corgi. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. I remember once I was sitting on the couch and I had my legs crossed and the dog went over on the other side and crossed her legs like that. Oh, how cute. <laughs> so <laughs> how long have you had your dog? How what? How long have you had your dog? Uh, it's been about three years now. Okay, so that's about the same. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. How long have you lived in Charlotte? Three years. We got about the same time we got him. We got married and then we moved here. There you go. It was kind of like everything happened at the same time. <laughs> oh, you did it all at once. Like, Pretty much. Everything like a like happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> so your business is you are a life coach or a health coach, wellness coach? What kind of coach? All the above. The, I am a physical therapist okay. and I describe myself as a mind and body coach and also intuitive healer. Then that I bring the life coaching as much as the wellness coaching because I believe that's all connected in some way. It is. And yep, yeah, kind of like the body, mind and soul experience into one session all that's, together. That's how the Synergy Lifestyle Academy is set up. It's in five different areas of career, finance, relationships, spirituality and wellness. So Perfect. if you're a relationship coach, it might not just be a romantic relationship. It might be a relationship with your money. It might be a relationship with your health. It might be a relationship with yourself. It might be a relationship with your business. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of interacts. You know? Exactly. It happened the same thing with the body. Like when you have the relationship with your body, it can be all different directions as well. Then, Yeah, I find it fascinating. Like um, you're doing some things and you get a little pain in your finger and all of a sudden you feel something in your neck and you don't realize that that's connected. So you have to go mm -hmm. to the chiropractor or an energy worker and get that fixed up and then, okay, my fingers work. Get the arthritis yeah, is gone. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I always describe it to the patients that most of the time the pain doesn't come where are you feeling? Right. And that's and that the same thing right. for the emotions. It's like the pain of the emotion or the symptoms, what I call, it's not necessarily what's the root of the problem is. And when we actually go deeper into the root of the problem, we can actually have a much more long lasting results than just fixing the sur surface or what is the symptoms instead of the problem. How long have you been doing your practice? I've been practicing for about 12 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been a bit over 12 years now. I love it so much. Yeah, it, to, to me, it's like I've been doing magic since I was a little kid. So I kind of understand how all these things are being done. And because I've been doing it so long, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not a full time performer anymore. But I, I always find it fascinating when someone really knows their stuff, how, how they can easily just, they just figure something out and go, Oh, my God, that's connected. Oh, totally. Yeah. Sometimes things just come to me like, it's so nice. I've been doing that for so long and I was being interested in health even before I graduated as a physical therapist and got my degree in coaching and all of that. And it's interesting. Sometimes I'm talking to family and friends and things just kind of like comes out like you say, and it's like, huh, how do you know that? And it's like, oh yeah, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> you mean like intuitively? Both. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people, some people, when they think, okay, intuitive, that means you're like psychic or they get into the woo-woo thing and then all of a sudden they don't believe it. But mm -hmm. to me, intuitive is just kind of being around so much stuff, so much of that of specific body language, you can see it. It's like in my magic business, I can tell if someone's got a, a tense shoulder, they're probably, that's where they're hiding the coin. It's a, it's a little bit of tension that doesn't seem quite right. Mm -hmm. And I think that you, if you've been in it so long, you can kind of pick up on that 
Like, why is that person walking a little funny? Mm -hmm. You can see yeah, it. For me, it's actually both of them. Like what you say is a really good point as well, because I do pick it up on those subtle muscle tone or anxious or the organs feels kind of like a little bit more inflamed because it's a little more swollen on the area. But that is definitely the experience, knowledge from all the years I've been doing that. But I also uh, explain sometimes to my patients the the intuitive part of my work is also my gift of reading people's body. Mm -hmm. Then somehow I can just sense if someone having a tight muscle or they have a specific problem, it's kind of like almost like the body's talking to me. Yeah. Then for some people that maybe sounds more like a woo woo kind of thing, but it's it's really. In, is reading between the lines what the expressions that we are having and underneath the expression are the feelings and emotions and inflammation that kind of all come together. Yeah, it's really yeah. just kind of being perceptive of it and you've been trained in that because you've been doing it so long and eventually it's like easy breezy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like my wife is a coach. She's a shaman, so she does energy work and she works with people's dreams and things. And Beautiful. I'm an advocate of coaches because you can't see, like me, if I'm, if, there's a, if I'm having problems, I can't see it. I can't understand it because I'm in this goldfish bowl of this is, what I, this is how I grew up, this is what I perceive, this is what life is all about. And it takes someone else to look at it and go, you didn't see that, did you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are, those things that a person just doesn't grasp. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> That is so true. It's so much easier to look when you're outside the box. And yeah, I think I, that's one of the beauty of the coaching training. And that's a big difference with people that just pretend it should be a coach and they call themselves coach without knowing what they're doing. It's that uh, be able to be outside of the box. Be well, able that's to part do. of the problem with all that. I mean, I get uh, the, the people that call themselves coaches and they really aren't. Even mm -hmm. though, hey, I can make some money doing this because people say mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good with people. Mm -hmm. Well, you're missing some stuff. You oh, they're missing a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate because, I mean, everybody on the internet is a social media expert. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not Even everybody. Though they have 20 members to follow, 20 followers on social media. <laughs> I know, it's kind of funny when you go on their website and you find out that they don't have all that. <laughs> yeah, but I always tell people like everything in life, they are professionals and they are not. And that's, we just got to filter through it who we're working with for sure. Yes, the pros and the posers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So what type of people, do you have a specific niche that you work in? Like some people will say, I'm just working with women or I'm only working with widows or I'm just working with men that are uh, athletes. Do you have any specific niche that you work with people or? I think my work is just so specific per se that I, I rather not make any more specific with the niche. I, I, I help any patient that come in or clients that come in, they want to do the inner work that's body and mind connection. And yeah. one of the biggest philosophy that I have, that's a big difference between my work and a lot of other people that I see out there. It's the idea of, empower ourselves to be our own healer yeah then i actually wrote a book they call ignite your inner healer i actually have a copy right here that's yeah, the book that's the book on amazon okay and, and that's kind of like behind of my philosophy it's kind of we can do that ourselves. i'm just here to give you a little hand a little help but i'm not here to do the work for you and I think our society is so conditioned to like, okay, I'm going to lie down on the table and you're going to fix me. Right. Or I'm going to sit here and you're going to tell me what I'm going to do. Then the specificity of my work is like, no, 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 no. I'm not telling you what you do. I'm going to teach you how to figure it out what you do. Either is a physical therapist problem or a coaching problem or a healing problem. Um, even with the energy part that I work with, it's like, I don't clear people's chakras. I'm going to teach you how to clear your own chakra. That you don't have to keep coming back from me. The same yeah. thing with your, your body. Like, I'm going to teach you how to take care of your body. That you don't need to come back to me later. 
then that's the philosophy that I um, describe when I think about niche. It's not everybody's into that kind of work. Yeah, a then, lot of it is the, uh, the mindset of the person too, I think, because if they're thinking one way and then you, you do some work and you fix things for a little bit and then all of a sudden they still have that bad mindset, they're just going to snap back to the old ways, you know? Exactly. And that's why the work needs to be combined, the mindset shifting with getting the tools and learn how to use it because like you say otherwise you will come back and do the same thing again and that's you're going to need help again yeah I, some people use that term thinking outside the box and i change mm -hmm. it to thinking without a box there we go i like that <laughs> even <need> better box. <laughs> who needs a box <laughs> you know i had that when i was in Asheville, i was working with a guy that uh he taught meditation and he mm -hmm. taught what he called heart-centered meditation and um, cause I'm always in my head, you know, my mm -hmm. logical brain. And he was trying to explain that you got to think with your heart instead of your head. Absolutely. And, and then I would say, okay, so what you do then is you bypass your head. And he was trying to get across to me that, no, you go direct to the heart. Don't even <laughs> think about the head. And it's really a hard thing to think about, but you have to kind of get in that vortex of just the heart and go directly to the heart. You're not Absolutely. bypassing some other thing because then you've bypassed through it. Mm -hmm. Just ignore the head. That, that's a big challenge for me because I'm, I'm a logical kind of guy. I think things yeah. through and trying to figure out leverage and all that. And sometimes you just got to get heart centered. And it's really, a, it's always a challenge. Yeah. That is such a good point. And one thing that I actually teach my patients to do it, it's connecting with the body. And with the body, connect with the heart. Because when you are connected with your body, you don't have head space. You're out of your head space. Okay. Then the more body perception, the more body awareness we have, the more ancestral intuition we have, the more ancestral our, what is our true, what our heart needs, what our heart wants. Then I You're feel that's kind to of- to kind of go with the whole body and then to the heart? Not necessarily the whole body, whatever feels easier for you to begin with. But it, that's usually kind of a way to make things a bit easier instead of just because I feel like sometimes we have this idea of, oh, we got to bypass the, the mind or we got to keep our mind empty. And the reality is the mind jobs, it think that if we give something for the mind to do, the mind stop being on the way yeah then that's where the guided meditation sometimes can be really helpful for people that have a difficult time to connect to their heart because when you're doing the guided meditation it gives something for your brain to do your brain mm -hmm. is busy thinking the guided meditation and then you can connect with your breath and then you can connect with your body and then you can activate those tools you already have the self-healing abilities we already have the placebo effect the neuroplasticity, all of the things that our body already know how to do can be activated when you connect with your heart and you connect with your body. Sure. But you can do that from the mind. Yeah, that makes it like a, the idea of using mala beads. That's like another. Counting sheep or mm -hmm. something other than like focus on your breath, breathing in and out, in and out. It gets you out of your head. You think, start thinking about the same thing that isn't relevant. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's just a tools, right? It's like there are so many different ways for us to access the wisdom that, that we have inside. We just kind of find what tools work for each one of us. Yeah. I look at like the brain has got the left and the right hemisphere. So you got like a, a duality thing going on. And what you got to mm -hmm. do is get rid of that and go to that other level of everythingness and nothingness. And then you can but, get to that place. Exactly. And that place said that there is no duality. <laughs> it's, it's weird to think of nothing. <laughs> yeah. And, and for me, being a physical therapist, it's so fascinating for me to see the science behind of the mindset and the way we thinking, because I work a lot of times with um, patients that have neurologic problems before. And that is that part of the brain that's not working as well. Then we do need to find that sense of one brain versus right and left mm -hmm. to get the side that's not as healthy to make it up for the difference. And the brain does. 
and then suddenly you see people walking again, moving their arm again. Yeah. And it's so fascinating to see the power that the body has to transform and heal when we yeah, use the, the right brain tool. is plastic it's always kind of redoing its thing when when i was in Asheville, there was a guy because i had that mild stroke it wasn't severe it's was just a transient ischemic attack just a small thing mm -hmm. so it didn't i did my face didn't collapse or anything like that it was just good Simple. and then but i still went into this guy at this brain core thing where you put the little thing on it has the electrodes in it mm -hmm. and then i sat and i watched movies i watched tom hanks movies and it was set up so that because you, you did a pre thing and scanned my brain how it was working and then set the deal up with that. So as I was watching the movie, the sound would either go down or the picture would start getting dark. And my brain would have to reconnect things to be able to see the movie. Mm, and it would fascinating. Some stuff. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah. And I think the body and the, the body can do the same kind of thing. It can learn you know, how to make things work. But sometimes you need someone like you that's a pilot that can drive and steer the ship, so to speak, right? Captain of the ship. Absolutely. Yes, yes. There are, there's a lot of things we can do our own, on our own, but sometimes we can't. And it's kind of like sometimes I describe to people as like a, surgio, a surgical person, a surgical doctor can operate on themselves. Then sometimes yeah. we do need, if we knew the answer, we already had solved the problem. Then yeah. when we get to the point that we don't know what to do or how to do it, then that's the time that I come in and I figure it out and teach you how to figure it out. Then you next time you kind of know what to do. Yeah, they have that aha moment. Yes, I love I love those moments. We usually have plenty of those during the sessions. <laughs> it's so fun. Well, I, I'm 62 and I just had an aha with the the whole event industry and, and until you're in this the environment to learn from it you can't learn from it but i was very um confident that the business i was in of events hospitality travel and tourism was going to be going on for a long time i thought events people want to get together and meet people people want to get uh, they want to travel mm -hmm. well guess what you got this corona mm -hmm. thing they don't you can't do right now yeah, you gotta so prove I, it I had the aha. I thought events, that's the thing to do. And then I, I also realized that there's a limited number of hours in a day to do events and there's a lim limited number of days on a calendar. So it's very limiting. That's why it's so hard to promote events because everybody's promoting them and there's only 365 days in a year. Mm -hmm. That was an aha I had. That's why I moved back into more online marketing because there's a lot of space out there. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's another beauty of working from your heart because when we are in our mind, we get black and white answers. Okay, that's what I need to do, and if I can't do this, it's nothing I can do it. That's that's wrong. Then when you are connected to your heart, you're able to pivot. You're able to be flexible with your life experience, and then you just okay, this is not working. Okay, next door, maybe next window, and we allowed ourselves to be so much easier to navigate because we're going with the flow and we allow that to happen. That's when you really know that you're working from your heart. Mm -hmm. Where, where it uh, doesn't make any logical sense and you end up doing things. Exactly. See, when we moved, we were in Minneapolis and we all started getting these messages about Asheville, North Carolina. I had never heard about Asheville, North Carolina, but I open up a magazine and a little card falls out, says visit Asheville. We visited some friends and they uh, were gonna move. Where were they gonna mm -hmm. move? They're going to move to Asheville. We mm -hmm. just meet these other people and they just came to town. Where'd they come from? Asheville. So we decided to move to Asheville. I go to uh, get the, the U-Haul truck for moving. And the guy says, I got a friend that lives in North Carolina. Or my brother lives in North Carolina. I said, what, where, where does he live? He goes, Asheville, North Carolina. So all these coincidences happening. We moved to Asheville. And on the way down, the hotel, the motels that we stayed in, two of them were um, one one one. Wow. One, one, one. <laughs> so paying I mean, attention I, to those little coincidences absolutely. doesn't make any logical sense. And that's when we know that we follow our heart. I have a very similar experience moving to Charlotte myself. And yeah. coincidentally or not, my house number is one, 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 one. Really? We're five months together. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of stuff that is just bizarre. It's like, oh, hold on. <laughs> 
Yeah, so you, can, you cannot see that. <laughs> you know, you I heard that Asheville, things. up in the mountains, it's built on mountains of crystals. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you knew that? Yeah. Yeah, the very high frequencies, a very beautiful energy there. It's very fascinating, that kind of stuff. Well, and I don't like to do these too long because people have that commodity of time. There's only a little bit of time. So I like sure. to let them watch the whole thing. And then if they get to know and like and trust who you are, then they can contact you direct. So how do we find mm -hmm. you? And could you show your book again? Yeah, then I have here. So that's my book, The Ignite Your Inner Healer. You can find that on Amazon. I was the best seller for like two or three weeks on Amazon. I was very proud of myself for that. I have a bunch of five-star yeah. reviews. Then very, very happy with that. Uh, and I also have a gift for your, uh, for your audience. If they can go to my website. My website is Be Healthy with Anna. The B is B E, healthy with Anna, and Anna is A N A dot com. And if you put a forward slice and the word free, I have a bunch of extra freebies there they can download. They have uh, self care, um, 33 different ways to practice self care, what's really important for our healing. I also have the first chapter of my book there for free if anybody wanted to check it out before commit to the whole book. And I have the YouTube channel there. And there are a couple of things that they can do to kind of get to know more of my work and getting some more benefit of the um, self-healing and self-discovery journey that we can all benefit from. And you do some of this online too, right? It's not just... I do. I have clients all over the world. Okay, perfect. So it's yeah. be healthy with Anna.com slash free. Easy right? enough. <laughs> I did it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe. Thank you. Thank you.